Hi everyone, I'm filming this when I'm just two days away from six weeks after the bunion surgery and I did get the exact name of the type of surgery they did and hopefully I'll um, pronounce it correctly but I'll also put it on the screen. It's Lapidus Aiken Bunionectomy. So that tells a doctor or somebody else in the medical profession what they actually did inside my foot. All right, so um, since my last video, I did go to the doctor to have the bandage dressing removed and to have the stitches removed. Um, now, while I'm talking, I'll put in fast motion the bandage dressing getting cut off. Um, if you're squeamish, you might not like looking at a stitched up foot, but, you know, that's just reality. So um, so this was two weeks plus three days after the surgery. So two weeks is a good amount of time, but that was surgery day for my doctor's office. So um, I added another three days for my appointment. Um, so they cut off all the bandage and I was supposed to have another um, uh, appointment two weeks after this, but when the physician's assistant came in to talk with me, she said, no, you can skip that appointment. You'll come back in four weeks. Um, so anyway, after she left and I asked her a lot of questions and I told her a lot of things, so it turned out that the documentation that was given to my sister-in-law on the day of surgery that I was sent home with was put together by the physician's assistant and it's based on once they're in there, they make their final decisions about what type of surgery they're going to do. So she did a copy and paste to make the document, but she did realize there were some things in that document that I should have known at my last appointment. And they should like, hey, you might need a cane or you might find an e-walker to be helpful. Like give that to the people on the last, you know, on the last appointment before surgery. But I also talked to her about the cost of the shoe. And then she was the one who surprised me and said, oh, you're going home with a big boot and you have to wear the big boot and you can't drive with the big boot. So there was my negative surprise. Well, one of my negative surprises that day was you're going to have to wear this gigantic boot, well, boot, first of all, and um, you can't drive in it. And I said, you know, when I talked to the nurse, he said I'd be driving two to four weeks after surgery. Well, you can't drive in the boot. So um, I have been wearing the boot is if I'm not using the knee walker, but around the house, I use the shoe still and use the knee walker. And if I go out with the knee walker, I just have the shoe. So um, so that was the interesting thing. So here's the other negative surprise about the boot that, again, they should have told me about this at my last appointment. So when you go to your last appointment, ask to see the shoe and or the boot, which for me it's and, that they plan to give you, not give you, charge you for, because the shoe they charged me for in surgery day was $88, but you can get one of them for like $15 or $20 online. So you want to see the kind that they like and see if you can get that exact kind or something very similar to it. So the boot, <laughs> um, another assistant came in after the physician's assistant and took all the stitches out. That was very painful, much more painful than getting the stitches out of my hand. And of course, somebody from work started texting me during it. Um, so I just laid back on the table and answered the business work text messages. It actually distracted me from the pain of having all these stitches removed. But um, she, <laughs> so then she put um, these little tapes over all of where the scar was. And she said, don't pull them off. They'll come off on their own. Of course, the nurse said they'll come off in about a week, which now I'm more than two weeks after they put those tapes on. And I still have a few left. Um, but I'm going to also show you how I wash the foot. Because <laughs> they told me now that the stitches are out, I can get it wet. Not soaking it. I can't sit in a tub and soak it. I can't put it in a soaking bin. But I could shower. So I tried it, but standing on that foot by itself is so painful and creates pain for later that I decided, no, I'm not going to do that. So, um, so let me tell you about the boot first, and then I'll tell you how I'm taking care of my foot. So the boot, they walk in with this huge boot, and they said, um, your insurance will be charged $569 for the boot. And I decided that was highway robbery. 
And um, so this assistant was really good with me. She, um, so she brought in the boot. It was in a bag. It had a sticker on it and little stickers that can be pulled off. So she gave one of them to me so I could look at the boot. I said, you know what? My company sells these boots. You know, let me see. And she said another brand that they used to sell um, or give to patients, oh, sell to patients, was called Aircast. The brand they have now is called Bregg. So I looked up the Bregg boot. And that exact boot you can get online for $125, okay? When I called Blue Cross Blue Shield and gave them the code that the assistant had given me saying this is the code that the boot would have come on, the Blue Cross Blue Shield person said, well, that wouldn't have been covered. You would have had to pay for that. So I'm like, I don't even know if I'm getting an accurate answer from Blue Cross Blue Shield. But I looked up the Aircast, and I'll have a link to it below. They sell it on Amazon for a great price. I actually got it through my company and got the exact same price with my employee discount. So buy it from Amazon. And if you read the comments for the Aircast boot on Amazon, there was one person who said they had the Bregg boot first. They didn't like it. It was not comfortable. And then they brought this Aircast boot and they found it to be a lot more comfortable. So also on the left side of that Amazon page where that boot is, there's a link to a video where Aircast shows you how to put on the boot. So I'm not going to take the time to do that because they have an excellent video showing you exactly how to put on this ginormous boot. So it is helpful for walking. It really is. And with that, I only wear the sock with it. I don't put the ace bandage around it because that's too much. So when I wear the shoe, I have a sock and the ace bandage. Okay, so that's what I bought. And I would suggest you do the same thing and do it ahead of time. And then at that appointment, you can bring your own boot. On the day of surgery, you can bring your own shoe or whatever it is that they want you to have. But, you know, it's just ridiculous how much money they, they want you to spend on this. Okay, so, um, so I want to show you, too, how I'm cleaning it now. So I sit on the toilet lid next to the tub, and I have a shower massage in there. And I pull that down and I just rinse the foot off nicely, gently. And then I take a washcloth with some soap and I just gently wash my foot. And then I rinse it off again with the shower massage and dry it off. So at this point, um, where some of the tape has come off, there was some scarring, not scarring, but yeah, little scars that have come off and they're still really tender. One of them was a little bit bloody. So I'm putting on some antibiotic ointment and a band-aid over those two spots. And um, then I want to show you the rest. Actually, I talked in that video, so I want to show you what I'm trying for the pain. So the place where I'm getting the pain is right in here from about here. So to the left of the um, where the stitching was um, all in here so I have some biofreeze I don't know if it works but it's kind of a cooling but this is mostly where I ice it too and over here so my foot is still very mm, it's puffy <laughs> it's swollen so still waiting for these to come off. So interesting that they're not, because it has been over two weeks. So after that, I put on, they have these toe spacers for me. I have two of them, so I wash them every day. And then uh, now, instead of doing the surgical sock, because it's kind of stretched out now, even though I was uh, washing them every day, I went to Ulta and got more of these um, aloe socks because they're just kind of roomy in here and they just feel good and they stay on. And then I have two of these ace bandages with the... Um, so I put this on when I'm wearing the shoe, which around the house I wear the shoe. Um, if I'm going out without the knee scooter, the knee walker, then I put on the boot. So when I'm wearing the boot, I only have on the sock and I don't put on the ace bandage because it's just too much. So this is a very wide ace bandage, probably wider than I need. This is like six inches. And um, let's see if I can get this on the video. I think I did it in the last video. 
how I wrapped it, but four inches would have been good. The six inches really more for the body, but I work it. And it just feels more comfortable having the foot protected. I'm glad that the physician's assistant suggested I get some of this. It would have been nice if they gave me some. Okay, and so I wrap it like this. And then I put on the shoe, which is nearly good. Put on the shoe. Here's the shoe. Stick my foot in it. Okay. Otherwise, when I put on the boot, like I said, um, the Amazon link has a really good video showing how to put in the boot, but that's how I put on the shoe. So that's what I'm doing to dry, try to give my foot some cooling. I think because of the pain and what's going on, I, I don't have a lot of feeling at the surface when I touch my foot where it's hurting. Um, but right now I'm filming this like five minutes after I just filmed that other piece. And I am feeling the biofreeze that it is cooling a little bit because I can't put ice on it all the time. You know, so... Um, what else do I want? Oh, so here, <laughs> here's the other surprise that I'm doing with. So when I, when I had that appointment, the physician's assistant said, you're probably getting some zingers of pain once in a while. And I said, yeah, once in a while, but it was mostly, it was during the day. It wasn't keeping me up at night, but I would say at about three weeks after surgery, I started getting these zingers at night where I'm doing okay during the day. I get into bed, I'm reading and all of a sudden the foot starts going, eh. Oh, it just hurts and it just keeps me awake or sometimes I fall asleep and I wake up and nothing is taking that pain away so I put the Euro pillows back in my bed to prop it up because I keep looking for a comfortable place where the foot's going to stop hurting and, and stop doing the zinger so I can fall asleep again so I have lost quite a bit of sleep um, over the last week week and a half just because of these zingers um, going to try adding more anti-inflammation foods to my diet. One night I took three Tylenol, had a great night's sleep. The next time I, next night I thought, oh, I'm going to try the three Tylenol again, took them and had the zingers anyway. So, you know, why take the medication if it's not going to help? So, um, so <laughs> someone said to me, well, you want to make sure that your body isn't rejecting the metal inside. So I called the doctor's office. I wanted to talk to the physician's assistant. I left a message asking her to call me back. And instead, the nurse called me back. And he said, oh, that pain is normal because you're walking on it more. And I said, I'm really not walking on it more because I have the knee walker. So I don't know what he's talking about. Um, it's normal. If your body was rejecting the metal, you'd have a fever and it'd be really red there. And so um, I don't mind the pain during the day. I can manage that, but I do mind the pain during the night. Um, so again, trying to manage it now. He said, just keep elevating it during the day and putting ice on it on and off. So still trying to do that because it is still swollen. Trying different ice packs. I also have the TheraPearl, and I need to remember to link to that just in case I can find some TheraPearl on Amazon. Let me see if I can find that. Those stay frozen for a little bit of time, but not very long. The thing is, they don't get wet in the outside. You don't have to, you know, you just pop it back in the freezer and they freeze back up again pretty quickly. Um, the socks that I'm wearing um, recently, I'll link to those below from Ulta. I'll link to the BioFreeze below. You can get that on Amazon now. Um, I'm going to be looking for some other ice packs things because the one they sent me home with from the hospital the hospital was pretty nice but it's it's getting it's getting worn so I'm gonna get another one so um yeah so surprised by the price of the boots surprised that I couldn't drive yet and surprised by the pain at night so that's probably the worst one um meanwhile and a neighbor of mine had a different doctor do her surgery she, different kind of bunion surgery but still bunion surgery and he put her in a cast but she's and then the shoe over the cast and she's driving a little bit so I don't know I I might try driving before my next appointment just short distances because once they say yeah you can drive I don't want to be like woohoo I'm going 20 you know 20 or 30 miles to wherever I need to go so I might want to do um, some short 
some short visits. <laughs> and I still have my handicap placard. So get that handicap placard at my doctor. They keep my state's handicap form on their computers. And the same form is for either permanent or temporary. And all I had to do was call them and say, I want to pick it up. They filled it out with all the information. I picked it up. I took it to DMV. Excuse me. And I left the DMV with a placard. Now in my state, the temporary placard um, is a certain color and it's got all the months of the year at the bottom and then they just punch it out. So what I learned was what you want to do is go in the beginning of the month. So I, when I first called the doctor's office, they said, well, don't go at the end of June. Um, pick it up in July because what they said was the date starts on the date that the doctor signs it. But... Anyway, in my state, it actually, so I, I showed up, I got it in early July, I brought it over there the same day, and it's good to the end of September. So what they say is it's good for two months, but it's, so July 10th, July 3rd is I think the day I went, so it was good till September, September, but it's the last day of the month, so they punch out that month, and that tells any police officer or whatever walking by that that temporary placard expires on the last day of the punched month. So it's been very helpful. Um, I can put it in anybody else's car when I'm a passenger. Um, so that's really helpful. Okay, so those are my tips. Ask those people what kind of boots and shoes. Buy them ahead of time. Buy all the stuff ahead of time that you're going to need. Um, be ready for paint at night later, possibly, depending, you know, especially if you have the exact type of bunionectomy as I'm having. And make them be honest with you about when you're going to be driving again, because that's really important. All right. Thanks for watching. Check out some of my other videos by clicking one of the images on the right side of your screen or mouse over the upper right hand corner and a little eye appears. And if you click it, some other videos will show up that you might be interested in watching. And thanks for watching. Bye.